So without further delay, let us welcome Marion Kent. So this first poem has a working title provided by Twilight, which is I'm going to miss the cat, although I may change this title. And some of you have heard this. How could you know in the night that your fight would be the last before her leaving in the morning? Why would you believe it when she said, I will be gone in the morning, that heated words, clenched fists of this night would mean the end? You were in this thing for forever. Never did you anticipate that she would rise after you left for work, pack in the cat and all the rice and her cherry mirrored bureau into her station wagon, a note on the table greeting you at the end of your day, warning, I'll be back for the rest while you're away. You could not have known that you would hold on even while letting go, the sick in your stomach rising up, discomfiting you over and over again. If you'd known it all that morning, you would have kissed her goodbye. And this is a very new one on the same subject called Subaru. On my way to work, I followed a car like yours and imagined you with all you held dear stuffed inside, slowly driving away. In the car ahead, sturdy straps tethered a car seat, positioned in the middle for safety. What might have been if we had continued to focus on what was safe? I'm grateful for the letting go, and you must have a different car by now. All right. So I have this new book, and now I have to shuffle around and figure out what page I'm on. Okay. This is called, oh, and it's called Responsive Pleading, and the artist is Max Germer, who's a local musician and, uh, and an artist. This is called In Dreams. Don your paisley shirt, waist dressed, pad barefoot to the garden, and spread your blanket on the lawn. As you place the teacups, Lucille Ball appears and drops a cake. She puts her hand on your breast and becomes your best friend from school, transfers a piece of gum in her kiss. You chew, she straddles you, the gum gets huge and hard, you can't talk or swallow or breathe, you hurl it in the grass, then your teeth start to crumble, the blanket catches fire, your cats disappear, you run to catch your children who have made it to the street, now you're lost in a highway maze, searching for your babies. This poem is, uh, has local interest. It's called The Brass Cat. Is anyone here? I live in East Hampton. Thank you, East Hampton. The Brass Cat is in East Hampton, and you can all go there for a beer when we're done here. <clears throat> a Brass Cat. You can stop in for a pint and peanuts finding yourself belly to the bar alongside the guy whose record you know by, by heart still, whose concert poster hugely adorned the wall above your co-ed bed. Brand new friend. And that's for Lloyd Cole, if anyone who lives here, shockingly. Okay, this one is uh, called Lake Keith, Z Lake Keith Zettelmoyer. Keith Zettelmoyer is the first man to be killed in the state of Pennsylvania in 1995 at the age of 39 when Pennsylvania reinstated the death penalty. And I happen to live, I'm from Pennsylvania, and I lived in central Pennsylvania near State College in a little place called Fisherman's Paradise, which is actually in Belfont, Pennsylvania, in a cabin, very bucolic and beautiful, with rolling farmlands that you'd drive through to get to it. And the farmlands were owned by the prison which is where, in Pennsylvania, prisoners are executed. <clears throat> and it's very, when I moved to Massachusetts, I, I, I was kind of unfamiliar with the landscape here, and I was struck by how similar the landscape of western Massachusetts is to Pennsylvania, and especially central Pennsylvania. So this poem takes us from Hadley to uh, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> like Keith Zettelmoyer, young girl with hair flying, Lugging an impossibly large pack on wheels, runs down a driveway for the school bus, passing a plastic rural mailbox held together with duct tape. A line of cars behind me snaking through the farm fields, my hair blown by the defroster. 
why I grew my hair long. A line of cars that first spring day, snaking through the farm fields on our early evening commute. Her hair blown through open windows under an impossibly blue sky, snaking through the killing fields of Rockview State Prison, where a man had come to die. This one's called Abad. <clears throat> Beyond the wretched waters, hijiki like sinew serpent tongue, swirling, stinking passiflora, longest viny fingers grasping and transformed, my hands on your face, arms wrapping you in woolest flannel. Beyond the maze of city streets in which a child can lose himself, stalked like so much savage prey, beyond the deepish, blackish forest, willow branches like death wisps, I reach for you this morning, love. Here in our four-poster, here gazing at the star water-stained ceiling, our untamed scent hangs on the air. Here beyond what night, night rains on you, until little feet patter downstairs and little bodies press against ours. Beyond all of that, tender moments, each more fragile than the last, fleeting before the workday begins with coffee, morning things, and my leave. So fleeting, we must grasp this, look it straight in the eye, and love it hard. I was going to finish with that, kind of like an ending, but then Brooks's poems about her grandchildren made me feel like I should read all the poems about my kids, and I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to read one. I have a bunch of poems about sleeping with my kids. This is one of them. Sorry. It's called Basic Human Needs. Sleeping, dreaming, drowsing, awakened, predictably, by one, then two, little bodies in my bed with their little voices, cold limbs and big needs. They snuggle in, then drift back to sleep. Mama's awake at 3 a.m., starting to count sheep, when a cozy little girl voice, the six-year-old now, says in her sleep, I love you, Mama. Mama replies, I love you, baby. Then the drifting, sleeping voice says, my butt isn't getting any blankets. 